electricity. Okay. Yeah, we can we can edit that out. Yeah, we can. I'm not gonna edit that into the, the beginning. <laughs> I love it when they do that in videos. Oh yeah, like yeah. The little bloopers at the beginning. Yeah. Uh -oh. Hey y'all, welcome back to MW Adventures in Gear. Uh, today I got my friend JT and we're going to go through something a little different than I normally do in my videos. Uh, we're going to go through some reloading setups for the good people out there that want to prep, prep your own ammo. Uh, and so he's going to go through his shoebox kit, you know, what he got started out doing and what he's doing now. Um, so turn it over to JT. We'll hey, started. thanks for having me Austin. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Pleasure. In my own garage. <laughs> Alright, first thing you're going to need obviously is a press. Now, this here is a nicer press. It's mounted on a workbench. If you have an apartment or a wife that doesn't want, to, want you to have a workbench, you gotta get you one of these. This is a piece of junk and I love it. Boom. Once upon a time, these were $30. They are not $30 anymore, thanks to the Pandy. Tiny little press. You can use this thing on your couch, watching TV, watching Austin's YouTube videos. You can use this on the back porch, hanging out in the sunshine, or if you want, you can do it in the garage, whatever. You gotta get it, you gotta get a press. These Lee Precision presses are kind of cool. Next thing you're gonna need is a set of dies. These dies are kind of junk. They are all worn out, but they still work. So what you do, with these little Lee presses, you get yourself some of these little shackles, or forget what the word is, little sleeves here. They thread right in there just like so. And you can dial in your uh, die right there, exactly where it needs to be. Lock it in. Would you, what would you dial it in with? Would you dial it in with this nut? Yeah, yeah, you just dial the, so what you do is you loosen this top nut here, screw your die in until it touches the bottom of your uh, shell holder, and you tighten this all down and you're good to go. You're locked in forever. That's been cinched down since about 2016. And boom, now you're ready to size stuff. Next thing you need is brass. Get a bucket. Go to the range early in the morning and just collect a bunch of brass. This stuff was all caked with mud. Gunk, brass. Get you some brass. If, you use, if you're reusing store-bought brass that you picked up yourself right after you shot it, it might look that clean. So when I first started reloading and I had that set of dies and that press, I didn't even use a tumbler. I just used dirty brass. You don't need to clean your brass every time you shoot it. About every two or three times, it'll still work. So I reused some of this brass like three times before I finally decided all right, it's disgusting, it's jamming my gun, it's finally time to clean it. So then I broke down and got a tumbler. You don't need a fancy tumbler just to make ammo go. This was like 20 bucks at Cabela's on sale many years ago. It still works. You don't need to spend a lot of money on a tumbler. What would you put in a tumbler? What you're gonna wanna do is get some tumbling media. You can spend as much as you want on tumbling media. What you really want to do is get a bucket. Go to Harbor Freight, and for about 20 bucks, you can get a ton of corn cob tumbling media. About five, six gallons worth at Harbor Freight for 20 bucks. It works great, it's super cheap, it'll last forever. So, when your brass is finally just nasty, gun choking, dirty, then you can finally go get yourself some tumbling media. Now keep in mind, none of the ammo we're making so far is really gonna hit the broad side of a barn, but it'll work. All right, so let's talk about putting powder in your bullets, in your, in your cartridges. These Lee sets, I lost mine, but they come with a little spoon. And these spoons are precision measured out of plastic, so you know they're nice and precise. And you can take this chart here that comes with your dies, with your Lee Precision dies, and it'll tell you here on this set of data how many scoops of gunpowder 
you need in order to make bullets go. Now, when I first did that, my ammunition would print groups that were about three inches long and about an inch wide at 100 yards. It was terrible ammunition, but by God, I was reloading ammo and I was all excited about it and I hadn't spent a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. The next thing I got was a cheapo little scale and a little scooper. Went to Academy, got me a little Hornady scale. I don't know how much this was, but definitely was under 20 bucks. So then you can actually weigh out your brass, or your, uh, not your brass. You don't Powder. need to weigh the yeah. brass. Powder, there you go. You can weigh your gunpowder. And these are nice, because it's got this funnel here on the back, so you can fill it up with powder, nice and precise. Shove your brass in there, dump it, and then you're good to go. Now, you can just set that right there. You can leave it. But, eventually, on your coffee table, because again, we're reloading in our living room now, you're gonna knock that bad boy over. Gunpowder's gonna go everywhere. Your wife is gonna be pissed, because now the carpet's explosive. So the next thing you're probably gonna wanna get is a bullet tray. This is a Frankfurt Arsenal bullet tray. These things are great. This one is sized for 6.8 SPC. This one's sized for 30-06. And let me tell you, I have a 223 tray. I hardly ever use it, because the 30-06 one works just fine, and it's a lot easier. You can put your bullet in there. It doesn't fall over. It's a lot, it's, it's sized looser. It's nice. You don't have to get the exact same tray for that cartridge. You get the one that's bigger, you can use it on more cartridges. Perfect. Now, your brass isn't gonna fall over, dump uh, gunpowder all over your wife's carpet. The dog's not gonna explode off of the explosive carpet. Everybody's happier. Now, eventually, now that we're reloading ammo, we're gonna use this piece of brass a lot of times. It's already been through the press three times. Now it's finally getting cleaned. What you're gonna notice is the brass is gonna stretch. That's when you need a brass trimmer. I bought a cheap brass trimmer and it's broken and I don't have one anymore. You do want a nice brass trimmer. Spend some good money on a brass trimmer, but you're gonna have a bad time. Now, my favorite piece of reloading kit. So this bad boy right here. This is the world's finest trimmer. You can buy these bad boys on the internet. This dude right here, let me pull it out here so you can take a look at that. Just look at that. So what you have inside of this thing, if you can see that, is an end mill, like they use in a CNC machine. It's got this, it's got this bearing in here with this little die in there. So what you do is you get a perfectly sized piece of brass. If you don't already have a brass trimmer, you can buy a, uh, a perfectly sized piece of brass on the internet. You can use that to set the end mill, with this here key, that hex key. Now, once you use your perfectly sized piece of brass as a gauge to set this world's finest trimmer, you never have to touch it again, and it's just gonna work. So what you do is you get a drill. I have a drill press. I also have a hand drill. Either one's gonna work just fine. Clamp this bad boy in there. Get that thing out of the way. So the next thing you need to do is turn on your drill press. Once it's plugged in, take this piece of brass, you just shove it up in there. This one's already sized. And you pull it out and it's perfectly sized. And every single brass you put in there is gonna come out just right. They're all gonna be a plus or minus. Now they can hear me out. <laughs> so now that the brass is out, it's all gonna be the same size, plus or minus a few thousandths of an inch. Totally fine. Now there's gonna be a burr right there. Once you start trimming your brass, you're gonna to wanna to invest in something like this. This here is a chamfer and deburr tool from Lyman, who makes really good equipment. So what this guy gives you is a little hollow tube that screws together in the middle. You get six little pieces. Now they make cheaper sets. This one was just an all-in-one set. That's why I got it. Also, it was on sale. Buy stuff on sale. So you get a... Uh, small rifle primer and a large rifle primer uh, primer pocket deburr tool 
and you get a primer pocket scraper. So until you get one of these, a scraper, what you're gonna notice is your primer pocket is just gonna get caked full of gunk. Absolutely caked full of gunk. For the first few loads, it's really not gonna matter, but after a few, you're gonna need to get yourself a scraper. A flathead screwdriver works great, but once you get a good primer pocket deburr tool, you might as well get the scraper. So this primer pocket deburr tool, you're not gonna be able to see it on this camera, but military brass has a crimp in there that holds the primer in and the primer pocket so that it didn't come out in fully automatic weapons or really abusive semi-auto weapons. I think they started doing that when the minigun came out. Don't quote me on that. I only know things from the internet. So you just take this and you grind away that primer pocket. Now you're in business. You never have to do that ever again. So after you trim your brass, what you're gonna wanna do is put on this little conical shape dude and this nasty little dude always wanted to... Yeah, this guy's kind of cool looking. Anyway, so you take this, and you just kind of gingerly scrape off the burr left from your uh, brass trimmer there, and you scrape out the inside, and boom, now you're gonna see the bullet in there nice and easy. It's not gonna scrape any copper off your bullet, and it's gonna be nice and smooth. So now you got a perfectly sized case of brass, all the chamfers, all the gunk is removed. It's gonna be a little greasy because you've just lubed this thing. We haven't talked about lube yet, have we? No, Ooh, we haven't. You gotta grease these bad boys. All right, that's the next thing we're gonna talk about. Now, are we talking about KY or? We're gonna talk about some good old fashioned three in one oil. <laughs> all right, so once you get your cartridge clean and you're ready to size it, what you're gonna notice is if it's just a dry piece of brass, it is gonna get so stuck in this cart, in this die. I don't know how many seeding stems I destroyed. I did ruin a good set of uh, dies at one point from our CBS because I was not greasing my brass. That is something you do not wanna learn the hard way. So let me tell you, what you can do is get a paper towel. You're gonna take that paper towel and you're gonna fold it over, make a little pad. Soak that bad boy in some three-in-one oil. Hell, I think I used Vaseline at one point. Grease. Get your cartridge a little greasy. Not a lot. You don't want a lot of grease. Otherwise, it'll cause it to wrinkle when you size it. Just roll it over that little pad you made yourself. Get a little, little slick. And then it'll size so much easier. And then you're not going to break. You're not going to break your seating stems. You're not gonna ruin your dye, you're not gonna destroy your brass. You know, you gotta grease stuff. Grease is good. But you can also buy a good kit from the store. There's a lot of different things you can buy. I went and got an RCBS case loop pad. So it's just this little foam pad. You can actually wash this thing out in the, uh, in the kitchen sink with a little bit of soap and water. I've washed it out several times. This side's pretty well worn, as you can see. This thing's gonna come with uh, some case lubes, pretty thick stuff. So you're just gonna take this out and spritz some on this pad. And you're just gonna smear it around. And for about 100, 150 cases, you just roll it just a little bit and it's perfectly greased. Invest in a good way to grease your brass. There's also sprays you can make. You can spray down your whole bucket of range brass, grease it that away all at once. So, how much stuff do you actually need to make ammo? All right. Remember, you're in an apartment or you don't have a garage with a, a good bench in there to mount a uh, press to. So you need a little baby press. Here's a little Lee hand precision loader. We've gone over those. You need a good set of, set of dies. You're going to need a bunch of brass. You can find that in the dirt at the range. A tray would be nice. You don't need a tray. You do need some way to grease your brass. You could get one of these. They're small. It's a tiny little case. Or you can get paper towels and three-in-one oil. 
Vaseline. I used motor oil once, that didn't work out well. Don't use motor oil. Um, you need a scale, otherwise you're gonna make really crappy groups with your uh, hand-loaded ammo. You don't want that. Get a scale. I learned that the hard way. You need a funnel. Before I used this funnel, I had a little paper cup that I made out of scotch tape and paper, and that's what I, I weighed out my, my powder with, because I was broke. And that worked horribly, but it did work. And I had a little paper, paper funnel that I also made out of notebook paper and scotch tape, and that's how I got the powder out of the paper cup into the brass. That worked horribly, but it worked. Get you one of these. I think they're like 10 bucks at Academy Boys. And eventually, this is all you need to really get started, but eventually, get a brass tumbler. You can spend as much or as little as you want on these. It just shakes, get a little lid, easy peasy, make sure your brass nice and shiny. That's what you want. And then, like I said, if you're using military brass, like 5.56 brass, you want a chamfer, no, no, that's not the right word. You want a primer pocket deburr tool. To clean out your primer pockets, screwdriver. Good enough. Once you start trimming your brass, because they've been through the rifle five or six times, then you need to start investing in a brass trimmer. If you keep on picking up range brass, you can kick that can on down the road because you're only using your brass five, six times anyway before you throw it in a shelf. And that is really all you need. But you start get serious because you got a bucket of brass and you're spending way too much money on reloading. Then you get yourself a nice trimmer. Don't get a cheap trimmer. Don't do it. I broke mine. It's not fun. And then you can get a good press. This here is from Lyman. You can put eight different eight different uh, dies in it. You've got a detent in there so you can put it right on there. It's got an ambidextrous mounted handle. It's nice. Now, the problem with this particular press is although it does look really good on Johnny Reloading Bench's channel, it does spit primers everywhere when you're depriming with it. But hey, it works. If you're in the garage, this thing's great. Boom. Um, see what else do you need to invest in? Powder measures. These are nice. Just barely trickles powder. About a tenth of a grain at a time. It's a lot easier to dial in exactly how much powder you're using. Once you really start dumping in powder, you get yourself a nice empty box. Um, <laughs> there you go. Here's a picture. I have no idea where mine is. But anyway, you got this barrel here, you got a lever. What this little machine here in this picture will do that I would love to actually show you but cannot is it distributes about almost as much powder every single time you pull this lever into a cartridge out of this little spigot. You can pair that with one of these little powder tricklers. Makes loading powder into brass so much easier. Um, indispensable once you actually start loading in volume is a hand priming tool. You can prime your brass on your press, even with that little hand press, you can get a cheap little kit. I would recommend as soon as you can get a hand priming tool. This dude's from RCBS and it is the bee's knees. I had one of these from Lee Precision and I broke the snot out of it. It's got a little piston in there. Just pop your brass in. This little holder here. Boom, that's all you need to load your, your primers in. You got this tray here. Boom, you can load in like 200 primers. So much faster than doing this on a, a press. Get you one of those eventually, not at first, but eventually you want one of these. So much faster. Um, now, if you're loading up garbage ammo, which you will be doing at first, especially if you don't have a lot of equipment, you don't need one of these. So this is a fancy little box to hold your precision rifle loads. If you're just loading up plinkers, you don't need this. You need a bucket or a Folgers coffee tin. That also works great for storing plinkers. But once you start loading up some match rifle ammo, get you one of these. It's a nice, neat way to stash your ammo. They're really not that expensive. 
Maybe they're expensive nowadays, I don't know. These are nice. Nice to have. Not, not critical. This is what you want. You want spare seating stems, expander bells, uh, these little stems here. I break the snot out of these guys. Now, every one of your reloading kits is gonna come with a seating stem. This whole stem assembly in the center here. You get one of these with a set of dies. But let me tell you, you are gonna break these by the dozen once you start loading in volume, especially if you're doing sketchy shit in your living room. That's just the way it is. So invest in some spare expander balls, seating stems, primer pocket popper stems, whatever that, there's a word for that, I don't remember what it is. Invest in these. They're impossible to get right now on the internet. I've been waiting on a shipment for like five months now, but they're ordered. That's what's important. And that's really all you need. That's it. You start with the minimum and then you roll. All right, so there you have it. Uh, thank you, JT, for going through your entire setup. My pleasure. Some things I wanted to add to it was uh, you really didn't talk about uh, bullets or anything. Um, uh, consumables. Consumables. The bullets, the power, uh, everybody has their own preference. Do you have a suggestion of where you could go to, one, find that, yeah. and two, where to buy it? If you're just starting out, just get powder. Get the cheap powder. You're going to be making crappy ammo anyways when you start out, so don't invest a whole lot of money in powder. If you've got multiple calibers, definitely get a powder that you can use across a lot of different guns. Um, IMR 3031 is a really good multi-use powder. You can use that in 223, 30-06, 3030, 308, the list goes on. Um, H335 is a pretty inexpensive powder. A few years ago, you could find it on the shelf at Academy every time you went in there. It was 25 bucks a pound. Stuff worked. You can print one inch groups with that with your AR all day long if you do your work right. Um, bullets, if you can find them at Academy, you can get some pretty cheap AR bullets. Um, something to be aware of is uh, you can pick bullets that you can use in multiple guns. So if you get 150 grain, 30 caliber FMJ bullets, pretty cheap plinker bullet. You can use that in your 308, your Op 6, your 300 Blackout. If you're in the middle of an ammo shortage like this one, you can actually single feed Spitzer bullets like that into a 3030. I've done it just to see if I could, and now I know I can. And uh, you should play around with stuff like that because I found out that my gun was twice as accurate with Spitzer rounds that it was not designed for. Actually, no, I would not recommend doing that. That's a terrible idea. Disclaimer, yeah. do it at your own risk. It was fun, though. <laughs> Don't do it. It was fun. Um, primers are the one consumable that I really have had trouble finding. If you can find primers, get them. Don't be that butthead that stockpiles primers, bullets, and gunpowder. You know, there's a lot of us out here trying to reload and have a good time and go shooting. Buy what you need. Don't be one of those panic people. Uh, but if you can find primers, you should get them because they are pretty hard to find right now. Uh, where would I recommend getting them? All of the consumables, bullets, gunpowder, and primers. Check your gun shows. Uh, hit your local gun shops and your local academy, etc. Stores like that uh, as often as you can. If you can, strike up a relationship with the guys that work behind the counter at these stores. Fun fact, they'll actually tell you when they're going to get shipments if you mm -hmm. strike up a good conversation. and Because they're all just like us. They want to help. They want to sell this stuff to you. They're gun advocates just like we are. And so they mm -hmm. want to help spread the love. So they will tell you if you just be nice to them. Mm -hmm. I've struck up conversations about the weather, shoes, uh how hard it is to uh, clean the garage with the guys that work at Academy. And I've, been, I've had some pretty good luck getting stuff uh, when it's in stock at Academy.
Because they'll tell me when we're done talking, like, oh, by the way, there's a shipment coming in tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock that might have some gunpowder. So I get up on Saturday and I go to Academy, and what do you know? There's a pound of gunpowder, and I'll get that. What would be the equivalent of Academy? Because not everybody has that. Uh, I have no idea off the top of my head. Um, uh, maybe Dick's Sporting Goods uh, or uh, Field and Stream if... Well, Dick's eating. doesn't sell ammo anymore. Uh, that's true. Supplies. They don't do any of that. Um, so we're in the South. We're in uh, Texas mainly. Yeah. So most likely we're only going to know Academy. But this, this type of store is an outdoor gun. They sell hunting gear guns. So any type of store like that, like Bass Pro Shields, Shop, Cabela's, I think is a good one Shields. I don't know. The country. Yeah. I don't know if Gander Mountain's even still a thing. It's not here in not Texas. Not in this part of the country. Um, so just look at those type of stores. Um, to end on some last notes, uh, JT mentioned looking at your local range to pick up brass. Uh, when you do that, make sure that the range actually allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. Some ranges like to, to do that and pick up their own brass because they'll sell it back to a re another reloader, make their money to keep the range going. So mm -hmm. you don't want to piss off the range guys. Make sure you strike a relationship with them too because you don't want to be stealing mm -hmm. their brass. It gets you kicked off and makes the reloader community look bad. Uh, so make sure that you at least check that out. Uh, I really appreciate you guys coming to this channel and looking at this. Uh, if you guys have noticed from my previous videos with uh, my Jeep stuff and with prepping, I try to bring stuff I learned through this process, stuff my friends learned. We all have different hobbies that I want to share with the world. You know, they all we're all on budgets. We all do real. We all have real jobs. We're not uh, making money off YouTube or doing anything like that. So. I want to bring stuff like practical urban suburban type mentality so that you don't have to watch a YouTube guy and say he's got a hundred thousand dollar rig. You can see us make, you know, do with, you know, that couch, uh, that living room that JT showed. With our or, explosive carpet. Yeah, you know, with the explosive carpet, <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is what I want to bring to you guys. You know, you don't have to buy a $10,000 generator. You can buy a portable generator that will do you just fine. And so that's the stuff I'll be bringing to you. Um, so again, I really appreciate the time today, JT. My pleasure. Uh, the viewers are going to love you. Oh, and, I hope so. Um, please like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. You'll probably see JT again along with some of my other friends and oh, their hobbies. Oh, makes me feel special. <laughs> That's sweet. Tell JT to start his own channel. Also, all yes. Fun hobbies. He needs to start his own channel because he has more hobbies than even I know how to keep track of. It's so. the last thing I need is one more. We'll see you <laughs> um, so take it easy, guys. So I'll talk to you later.